Genesis 1-2 says, Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. When looking at the beginning of creation, God created a world, good world, by hovering over the surface of the deep with the Spirit of God. When God created light, He saw that it was good. He made the water under the sky be gathered to one place and dry ground to appear. He called the dry ground land and the gathered waters He called seas. God saw that they were good. He made the land produce trees with fruits and He saw that they were good. He also created the sun, the moon, and stars and He saw that they were good. He created birds and animals and they look good. And lastly, He created men following His own image and likeness and He allowed them to govern all things created by God. Genesis 1.31 said, God saw all that He had made and it was very good. Likewise, God created all things good. Because Adam and Eve were created in God's image and likeness, they were the greatest beings among the creations before they had committed sin. As they lived in the Garden of Eden, where there's no harm and destruction, and where it is filled with various fruits, they looked to God, walked the Garden of Eden by holding the hand of God, and had close fellowship with Him. They were clothed with the glory of God. So even though they didn't wear clothes of men, they were not embarrassed. A good life of Adam and Eve, a face test. The enemy devil came and began to tempt them. God said, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat of it, you will surely die. Even though God had said this, Adam and Eve fell for the temptation of Satan, ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and rebelled against God. Consequently, the beautiful and abundant land prepared by God was cursed and produced thorns and thistles. Human beings who were created in a noble way following God's image had to live by carrying laborious and heavy burdens all their life. Furthermore, because human beings were created with spirit, soul, and body, the spirits of Adam and Eve died by rebelling against God. So their spirit, soul, and body were controlled by the power of death. Where did Adam and Eve go after committing sin against God? When God said, Adam, where are you? He hid among trees. When Adam and Eve rebelled against God's command and ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the glory of God left them. They discovered that they were naked, so shame and fear were completely filled in their hearts. They were no longer able to stand before God. They lost their beautiful dwelling place prepared by God. They had to live under the shadow of sins, diseases, poverty, curses, death, and destruction. If you look in the Bible, our good God didn't didn't give up on Adam and Eve. God asked Adam, where are you? This was to have him realize the situation he was in and to have him come back to God through repentance. Adam and Eve made coverings with fig trees. They tried to conceal their shame. But when the sun came out, the leaves withered. This shows that sins and transgressions cannot be hidden with men's strength. Today, people try to hide their naked shame by making 
coverings with leaves called ethics and morals. But there is no use. Shame that stems from sin cannot be concealed with means and methods of men. So God killed an animal for Adam and Eve, made clothes for them, and covered their shame. Shame and faults are covered by the expression of love. When I think about my childhood, there's something that I always remember. When I would sleep on a cold day and I kick my blanket, my mother or grandmother would cover me with blanket saying, oh, you might catch cold. And when I would take a nap, my grandmother would bring a blanket to me. Every time I think about the hand of love, I always remember about the love of God because God loves us. He covered our sins and transgressions. If God had judged us according to our sins and transgressions, there would be no one here. God took pity on us and loved us, so He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, and by His precious blood, He covered our sins and transgressions. John 1 John, 1 John 4, 9 says, This is how God showed His love among us. He sent His one and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. God killed an animal and shed blood. And He also made garments of skin for Adam and Eve. This clearly signified that He will send Jesus Christ in the future and make Him shed His blood and clothe people with Christ. In order to save us, God had to pay a tremendous price. The price of sin is death, and without shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. So Jesus became the atoning sacrifice by dying on the cross. John 1.29 says, The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. 1 John 2.2 says, The life of Pierre, we have seen it and testified to it, and we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and has appeared to us. As the Lamb of God who carries the sins of the world, Jesus became the atoning sacrifice for the whole world. Due to sin, the spirit, souls, and bodies of human beings were governed by the power of death, but Jesus, who is the Lord of life made us to come back to life. So those who believe in Jesus can enjoy good health and that all may go well as their souls are getting along well. If the Lord comes, He will save us from our sins and transgressions. In order to save us, God sent His Son, Jesus, to the world. And He made His Son to take responsibility of the sins that we have committed. So Jesus died on the cross of Calvary and he became the atoning sacrifice for humanity and he faced God's judgment. So when we believe in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we become new people because we were born from our Father. We are allowed to call God Abba Father. then we can pray to God and have conversations with God. Also, we can sing praise songs and pray, and we get to give thanks to God and realize things when we listen to the Word of God. And the new world that we couldn't understand will be open for us. In the past, there were things we couldn't see. In the past, there were things we couldn't hear, we couldn't smell, and we couldn't taste, and we couldn't touch. We only knew about the physical world, the third dimension. But now we can go beyond the physical world and
we can know about the holy world of heaven within the Holy Spirit. This is because our spirits that die because of sins and transgressions came back to life. Our spiritual eyes are open, our spiritual ears are open, and the spiritual understanding allows us to understand about the holy world. We whose spirits had died uh, came back to life because Jesus Christ and we became God's children. Isn't this amazing? This is the work of Jesus. Jesus gave us life in order to take away our stubbornness and He allowed us to live by faith and obedience. Even if we believe in Jesus, our souls are stubborn. When our stubbornness is filled in us, we can't walk with God. Even after believing in Jesus, there are times when we think in our own ways. We are stubborn. We speak and act according to what we think. If this continues, we can't walk with God. Therefore, when we believe in Jesus and when we are in the Lord, God allows us to get rid of our stubbornness and He will give us resurrection with faith and obedience. There are people who say, Oh, even if I believe in Jesus, why do sufferings come to us? This is because God is trying to break our stubbornness. Some people suddenly experience their stubbornness being taken away, taken away, and some people experience this gradually. When we experience failure and disappointment, our stubbornness goes away. There's no one in the Bible who were used without having their stubbornness taken away. Jacob, it took Jacob 20 years for his stubbornness to go away, and Joseph needed 13 years of slavery and being in prison. And Moses had to live in the desert for 40 years. People are not broken easily. When we face failure and disappointments, we are broken. God gives resurrection to those whose stubbornness is broken. Our soul must get along well. Our stubbornness must be broken so that our souls can get along well. Some people might say, Oh, I have no hope, and I have received life, uh, I have received death sentence. There will be times when you think this way. This is the time when humanitarianism needs to die, and this is the time when God oriented thoughts must come back to life. God gives blessings to those whose stubbornness is taken away. So when we face tests and trials, we must be pleased. And through tribulations and trials, we can be broken. And God allows us to receive resurrection with faith and obedience. Jesus gives us life with resurrection from physical death due to the advancement of science and medicine. Life expectancy has increased. Even young people and Eve can have to face death. When worldly people die, they face the end. But those who believe in Jesus know that death, physical death, is not the end of their life. This is because Jesus had promised us that He will give us resurrection. What if we can't receive resurrection? After we die, we will think, oh, we're going to die tomorrow, so why don't we just eat and enjoy today? And we need to enjoy pleasure, physical pleasure, as we live our lives. If we live in the right way and endure sufferings, we will receive resurrection. When we follow the pleasure of the world, we will be filled with greed and avarice and face death. 
those who live for the glory of God will receive the Lord's resurrection and eternal life. 1 Corinthians 15, 20-20 say, But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. Therefore, we must embrace the hope of resurrection and we must live by waiting for resurrection. All of you here have believed in Jesus and all of you here are born of the Holy Spirit. So we must clearly know that we are now new people. New people can enjoy a life where they may enjoy good health and that all may go well with them even as their souls are getting along well. God forgave us of our sins and transgressions through Jesus Christ, and He allowed our souls to get along well by having our spirits to become alive. He has broken our stubbornness, and He allows us to have all things go well. He heals our diseases. He makes us healthy. Furthermore, He gives life to the dead. And He gives holy body to those who believe in Jesus. Our God, who is the Lord of life, allows us to enjoy good health and all may go well with them. And as our souls are getting along well through Jesus, He wants us to live a victorious life. All of you are in the midst of this kind of grace. Isn't this amazing? Jesus Christ is life of our soul and spirit. Jesus Christ is the life of our heart. Jesus Christ is the resurrection of our physical body. God becomes a blessing to our life. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. All of you have invited Jesus as the Savior. So you are no longer old people in the midst of despair. You are new creations in Christ. What if God asks you, where are you? Then you must be able to make this kind of bold confession of faith. God, I am in Jesus. I have received forgiveness. I have received healing. I am a person who received blessings, and I have gained eternal life, and I know where I've come from, and I know where I'm headed. I am your child. I am a new person. By thinking about your new self and believing in this, and by confessing with your mouth, I bless you in the name of the Lord that you will live a blessed life as a new person. Hallelujah!